Welcome back to the channel. Well, since the last time I worked on the Audi, I've acquired the two pipes that connect the air pump. I was going to try and make one, and, I, and as you know, I bought the tubing cheaply. However, I came across um, the two pipes on a scrap um, Audi convertible. I've cleaned them up. They're in excellent, immaculate condition. So in this video, I'm going to detail how the two pipes are fitted. I may fit one, which is required, or I'm going to check the other pipe. And if it needs to be changed, I will change. But this will fix the problem of the engine management light and also uh, it will fix the air pump and the pipes which are connected to the air box and the engine of the car. Okay, wish me luck. Well, you might be asking, why have I taken the two front wheels off the car? Well, the reason is, as I have to get under the car to attach the air pipes, I thought it would be a good idea to take the wheels off, uh, clean the brakes, lubricate the pins. Again, this car stood for two years, so I'm just making sure that the brakes are free and also I'll be ready for the winter. I'm also checking for damage, there's a stone chip there. So I will cover that, I'll remove the rust with gel or light uh, and just make sure that everything is in order, give it a good clean. I might actually even remove the, the inner plastic protective panels just to make sure that the drain holes are clear. Um, it's all preventive maintenance um, and also it's Bangonomics. Um, I bought those pipes for a grand total of two pounds. Um, I don't know how much Audi would charge for the two pipes. They were on eBay for $49.95 for a second hand pair. So I've saved a lot there. I don't know how much they were at Audi. However, it's, it's about repairing the car as cheaply as possible. Um, I mean, it is roadworthy. It's got 12 months, well, it's got 11 months MOT now. I've, I've, I've ran the car for one month. But it's just make it's preventive maintenance. That's what we're talking about. I intend keeping the car. And I think, you know, this Bangonomics, it's about fixing all the faults um, as cheaply as possible um, and keeping the car going. So um, let's take the under tree off and let's get this air pipe or air pipes fitted. Well, I've removed the pipes. And you can see my effort of using an ad blue uh, filler spout to try and join the two ends together. Um, however, when I've looked closely, they are that that's broken. I've, I've, I've got that part, and I've you know removed it. You just see the marks from my hacksaw. Um, so I've, that was the pipe which was at fault which triggered the engine management light and here is the pipe which I got yesterday and also this pipe which I'm going to renew as well I might as well I'll probably keep that one as a spare um, I always when fitting pipes back onto um, parts there is a rubber ceiling like a rubber washer just see there. I'll put a bit of um, silicone grease in there, not to damage it, and then just attach it. Just makes a better seam and it's easy to push on. Okay. This is the air pump, and you can just see the connections. If I just put, I think you'll see my hand, that's one there, and the other is, it'll be somewhere I can see it there, it's up there. So those two have to, uh, you really have to take off the under tray. You can see the, where the alternator is, um, pipes, the sump, um, 
it's all there. There's another part here which I'm going to be looking at. I think that is, that's for the radiator. And here, again, you can see there, that's the radiator drain plug. Don't need to do that just yet. I will have the antifreeze tested to make sure it's strong enough for the winter. I think it's always a good idea, it's a two minute job. Some shops can do it, some shops are not really geared up. Just It's just a, a gauge and it'll tell you if your antifreeze is good. Now I know this antifreeze was changed five years ago when the timing belt was carried out. So it's, a, it's pink or red for antifreeze. It lasts for five years. Really, it could be changed. It's cheap enough, I think, you know, you'll have some left over. It's about 15, 17 pounds at Euro car parts. And it's just a matter of draining it, 10 minutes. You can flush it or 10 minutes drain, 10 minutes fill, warm, warm the car up and the job can be completed within the hour. Only thing is you've got to really take the, the under tray off. Um, and that, can that be done without, the, without jacking the car up? I really don't know. However, I'm going to disconnect those pipes and um, fit the new pipes. So wish me luck. Welcome back. Well, after nearly two hours, I have the pipes fitted. Um, it's been, it's tight uh, because of the size of the engine and what you've got to work with. So this pipe here has to lock in and this takes the air from the air filter and it goes down that pipe which you can see it's rooted down the pipe and to the pump which is underneath which I'm going to show you now so and this is what's been the problem so what we have here is the pump which you can see there, there we've got the pump but also we've got the connections and if you have a look those connections have to be airtight. They have to be airtight. And how are they rooted? Because it is beside the manifold or one side of the bank. So those are airtight. So it comes down, it's pumped, and then it's pumped into part of the manifold. Now these are tight, they're absolutely solid. Um, I had to take them, I had to actually take the air, air pump out because of the mountings this is actually floating so there's no vibration it sits on rubbers um so it's all been cleaned and lubricated but honestly it's been difficult not as in can't get nuts nuts are rusty it's just fiddly you just can't get any movement of trying to put the pipes on making sure they are rooted so anybody attempting this if it's a 1.8 or it's a 3 litre, the 3 litre, I would actually say take the pump out and connect the pipes and then put the pump back in again. Uh, instead of trying to wiggle them in place and they can't lock us the flexibility. So, the air is pumped down to that pipe or pump and it comes up again. And you will see it is pumped into, if you just have a look. You can just see there, it's pumped into that part of the manifold. And again, it all has to be airtight. I've actually, it's over the cross member here, and I've just put some loom tape. So if it rubs, it has to actually rub through um, the loom tape and then the plastic. There's a bit of hard plastic there, but it's all secure. Um, so, as I said before, it's not difficult. It's just time consuming making sure that everything's secure and everything's airtight. So what I'm going to do now is do the final reveal. Um, for my keys, just one moment for four days. As you can see, the windscreen wipers are on and the engine management light's still on. I'm going to be switching that off out in a moment. So foot on the brake. And then, this doesn't seem to be the air pump running. And I think one of the reasons is because of the engine management. Um, it's actually running now. So I'm 
this one is what the engine management like so I'm going to get my tool to scan it and remove it. One more. I'm back, just plugged it in. What I need to do is put the ignition on. See here. See that? Some of the lights will go out. Engine management lights still on. So now I'm going to perform a scan. Just takes a while and it should pick up that there is a fault. So let's just see. Just takes a while. Let's look at the ignition on. Now I can't remember if I delete the cords with the engine running or the cords without. And there we have, there's two, co two cords. So it says read cords. So secondary air injection system, insufficient floor. Well, we know that the pipe was disconnected. Well, it disintegrated and disconnected itself. So I'm gonna enter and then down to erase cords. Erase trouble cords, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Do you wish to continue? And then perform read code function to verify. Oh, I have to do that again. I should have gone through again. Sorry about that. And then press any key. I want to go through it again, so read chords. Right, turn key on with engine off. Right, so I was correct. Right, right, now I can't see. Sorry about that. Right, read chords. No chords are stored in the module. So now, press any, that's it. And then I want to start the engine. So I'll switch off and then in and see if the light goes out and there you go so now I've cleared the cord and hopefully I've actually solved the problem with the airflow hopefully hopefully okay right bye for now